the agenda for today's video is we're going to find the distribution of y where it's the square of a single x where x is normal 0 1 and then we're going to find the distribution of y when it equals x squared but x is a normal um, square to lambda 1 so we could put just mu here but this notation is going to help in another video when I prove or show the general distribution of a non-central chi-square. So here we have, we're going to let x be standard normal, and this is the density of a standard normal. And we're going to uh, let y equal x squared. But notice that, that y equals x squared is not a one-to-one -one function. If you, and so it doesn't have a direct inverse. So to, to calculate this, we have to partition our x into disjoint regions that make up the whole. And here we're going to go from 0 to negative infinity and 0 to positive infinity. We're going to maybe call them region A1 and A2. Then, then it each has an inverse over that specific region. And that's how we're going to have to calculate this uh, density. So the inverse over region 1, which is here, is, uh, is minus y to the 1 half, you know, kind of back solving for x. And, and over this region, it's positive y to the 1 half, or, or square root of y. And so x is equal to plus or minus the square root of y depending upon what region you're in. So the Jacobian of this transformation, and again depending upon what region you're in, is uh, the it's one over one one over two square root of y. And it's both because we will we'll end up taking the absolute value of this. So, the density of y is this. It's the addition of these two. And the reason that that happens is when you look at the density of y, then you have to find all the regions that it can be transformed back to an x. Here, it's, it's transformed to this region and this region. But there are cases where if this is broken up into several disjoint sets and then you look at a specific y it may be only mapped to certain regions not all of them but in this case it's mapped to all of our partitions so for every y so we get to sum over both of those regions the density but here we're taking you know in the region one it's minus y to the one half and in region 2, it's y to the 1 half. So we plug those values in to our normal distribution. So here, y to the minus 1 half, and then here's the Jacobian of that transformation, plus plug in positive 1 half Jacobian. And we end up with this. So I have simplified it. So I pulled out a, I took this y to the one half, took it to the top, same here, brought it out, and pulled it down. There's a, I took two to the one half in both, and pulled it out, and square root of pi, pulled it out. Um, there is this extra two, which I pulled out. And then that just leaves e to the, you know, this is a y to the one half, but it's squared, so it's just y. And it's the same, because when you square a positive, you square a negative, you get the same. So there are, there are two of these, so it's two times one of those, but and that two will cancel with this two. And it leaves this. Now, I rewrite this y to the one half as y to the 
minus one half y to the one half minus one because then this is set up in the form of a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom. So the square of a, a standard normal is chi-square one. So let's look at this when we take you know x is no longer a standard normal but it has some mean. So this is the uh, density of a normal with a mean uh, lambda the one half one and here we're going to skip a lot of the detail because it's exactly the same as the previous one where you have to break it up into disjoint sets because this is not a one-to-one -one function so here's our density and we plug them in so this is the normal distribution with minus uh, square root of y plugged in times Jacobian and then repeat over here it's the same now we're going to start simplifying this okay notice that the uh, 2 to the 1 half is pulled out uh, radical pi square root of pi is pulled out as just gamma to the 1 half the y is raised up on both of those and then pulled out and then what's left over is this 2 is common in both and it's pulled out here and then we have this e this this is expanded so it's uh, squared so we expand it in in both cases then the next step is we take out some common terms here. So this is a, a y is common in both and a lambda is common in both and a minus one half. So those are brought out here and, and this stuff is just pulled down and then what's left over is e to the two square root of y square root of lambda but that cancel this two cancels that two leaves this and then the same over here and now we're finished so this is a chi-square distribution with one degrees of freedom and parameter lambda okay now one quick note is that you will often see this as mu normal mu one and and this would be mu squared okay that's probably the common way to see this but this notation is I'm using because it's going to help me develop the general non-central chi-square distribution. So we're done. But I want to continue to show you what some very, very creative people do. Here's a note that the hyperbolic cosine is the uh, average of these two exponential functions. But this is very similar to this. We have the negative of it, the positive, and we're averaging. So this can be rewritten as that, the hyperbolic cosine. So you'll often see this as the density. But to me, that's not much simpler, <laughs> if, if at all. And then Another note that people do is they take that uh, cosine and rewrite it as the Taylor expansion, okay. plugging in this for x in each of those. Okay. So I'm not going to do that, but when you do that, then you can show that that density is a mixture of chi-square distributions, which is, which is uh, what's over here, with Poisson weights. And again, I'm not going to do it, but the literature quotes this probably the most. And this is the approach that they, that they use to get to it. I hope you enjoyed the video.